Oh, uh -oh. oh, there we go. We're live. Right. So um, today <laughs> I've got Kimberly done with me. Um, for anybody who doesn't know Kim, um, she's done our first two clinics at our Liberty Club. And um, she's got some quite cool stories to tell. Um, I first heard about her <laughs> on another podcast, talking about her crazy journeys around the world um, in pursuit of her art. Hopefully she'll share some of those with us. We've both got, well, I've got a glass of wine. I don't know what you've got in that big cup there. Oh, but, I've just um, got tea now. Oh. <laughs> tea. I've had my wine. I'm on to tea. <laughs> so, um, the first question then, could you introduce yourself and tell everybody a bit about yourself while I sip my wine? <laughs> yes. Hello. Um, so, I don't need to say my name's Kendall because it says it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yes, I am a um, horse trainer and a coach. Uh, so I train uh, liberty trip training, western riding. I do a lot of work, um, groundwork, natural horsemanship things, long reining, bit, bit of all sorts. Um, I set up Idlewild Horsemanship uh, last last year. Now wasn't the best time to pick uh, to set up a, a business, but there we go. I'm still still going so. Um, and yeah, to, to get to this point, um, I've been working with horses since I was, I think it was 17. Um, I've worked with all manner of, of different horses and in different disciplines, um, found my niche. Is it niche or is it niche? 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 niche in the UK, I think. Isn't it? Oh, God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so found that in uh, in Western riding, um, and then from there um, I went travelling and learned from some different trainers um, in America, Canada, Switzerland, Australia, um, all over, and that all led to lots of different adventures. Uh, met some very very cool people and made some very cool memories. Um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of a, a tell us, tell us how you got started then with the it, with horses in general. Well, why not? <laughs> you can tell you've had one. <laughs> I've only just started sipping. <laughs> um, so in general, uh, yeah, I've since I've been very small, I've always loved horses um i was obsessed with black beauty and i used to watch um the black stallion as well um the black stallion returns in particular I had a video and i used to watch it all the time um yeah and i loved them i used to collect all different magazines and i had this ring binder that i'd cut bits out of and make this i was a bit of a geek really yeah me too um, it's called horse sense by any chance pardon is it called horse sense by any chance no no, it was the Horse oh. and Pony magazine. Oh, I didn't know they had back. Um, yeah, it was that, and I yeah, I did that and made these fact files and and uh, yeah, but I I kind of like as a kid I went occasionally horse riding, but we couldn't really afford to keep it up, um, so I just kind of dipped in and out of it really. And then um, when I was, I think it was sixteen. I started riding regularly. I had a had a job then and could start paying for it and stuff. And um, yeah, and I started riding, and, and that 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 was it. Um, uh, yeah, I just completely fell in love with it. I I learned pretty much everything the hard way to start off with, particularly riding. Uh, I got booked off a lot and fell off. A, I say booked off. Probably later on, I got booked off. Mostly at the beginning, I just fell off. Um, <laughs> without much encouragement. <laughs> um, yeah, and then worked with. I ended. Then I very quickly started working with them, grooming and looking out and stuff. Um, so that was, and that was mostly with like school horses and hunters. Um, and then from there, oh, I went to, I did MBQs and stuff as well at a, 
at another college and did all that stuff. Um, and then uh, went to Camp America, did Camp America in North Carolina. Um, that was that was an amazing experience. I did it two summers in a row in the end. Um, made some amazing friends um, who we're all still friends now. Um, go to each other's weddings and stuff. So that's very cool. Um, had some good adventures there. And I think that's probably what gave me the, the travel bug in the first place. Um, yeah, and then from there, so there um, I worked uh, in the, there was like a, it was a massive facility, the camp that we were on. And they had a big equestrian program and they had like the main sort of equestrian bit that did all the regular riding and jumping and all the rest of it and um and then they had a smaller bit which was called apple hill and that was where like all the old horses and ponies like that were retired used to go up there Aww. and uh yeah we did the trail riding with them so that's where i worked and we used to go trail riding all day and uh, but it was it was all western tack um and that's kind of what led me to the next job i well it wasn't the next job it was the job after but in the uk which was working at a western facility and where I started western riding and got into all that. Brilliant. So how did you end up going on your travels then? Uh, well I so the the western place I was at Oak Ridge um, I was there a very long time and uh, towards the end I kind of I had I had it in me that I wanted to travel anyway um, and I ended up sort of when I left I'd, I'd saved up all this money um so I, I spent it on going traveling in australia and new zealand for a start um and um in the, in the meantime i'd also uh dan james had come over to do a clinic at oak ridge and um i was um it's that clinic probably changed without sounding too dramatic it does sound very dramatic changed the course of my life <laughs> it actually did though <laughs> but it did, yeah it did absolutely there's no question um yeah so he came and did this clinic um him and there was a, a lovely lady called um holly who i had some really good chats with actually and she kind of she kind of made me realize because she'd done a lot of traveling she made me realize that i needed to go and do this and it was possible and there's all this world out there and particularly with horses you know that was there for the for the taking i just needed to to make make the step she definitely some of those chats i was just like oh my god i need to i need to do this and and then a combination of that and the clinic with dan and all the the stuff the work that he was getting done in this clinic and everything was you know some of it was similar to stuff that i'd done before but there were some really cool differences and i, I don't know i just and then all the liberty stuff that he, that he does anyway and um yeah it kind of got me hooked so after the clinic i messaged him pretty quickly saying um i guess suppose i could come and work for you at some point could i and uh yeah and that that kind of went from there but he at the time was still getting set up with his facility that he's in now um so i had some time to kill so yeah hence then i had money and i thought well i'll go to australia then and new zealand so that's how the traveling started. And then, um, yeah, then I got back and then went to America um, to work with Dan. And, and that was all a load of other traveling too. <laughs> so I suppose that answers the next question, how you got involved in Liberty training then. Yeah. Was, was the clinic that you attended, was that a Liberty clinic or? No, it was a, um, I think, I'm trying to think what the title of it was it was it wasn't body because he does the body control under saddle but it was also there was ground work in it as well i think it was just a general mm -hmm. dreams clin clinic <laughs> <laughs> and uh yes yeah, so we we covered uh ground work and ridden ridden work um in that one but i knew so i knew who he was already because i guess what led me to the actual liberty part was um I had gotten really into freestyle reining, um, which do you want me to explain what? Yeah, you better explain that. <laughs> so it's um, so reining is uh, Western discipline, sometimes compared, if 
a Western version of dressage, like a faster version, in that it has lots of different manoeuvres that you have to perform. You have a, um, a uh, reigning pattern as opposed to a dressage test. Um, each one's slightly different, but it all has the same amount of different manoeuvres and things that you have to do. Um, and I, I, lo I loved raining, and, um, but what I've really gotten into is freestyle raining, which you can do, you're right, it's a bit like freestyle dressage, you do your own thing in it, you have to still complete, you know, a certain set of, of things in there, but you can, you know, do them in whatever order you like, to music, wearing whatever costume you like and I I just love freestyle um so I did I did a few what did I do Michael Jackson Bjork a few random things but I loved it anyway and um one of my freestyle heroes was was Dan because I'd seen him on YouTube and at the time there was this video that had been shared which was him um god I can't remember who he was dressed up as it was a I'm gonna get in trouble I think it was like a Red in, it was the Lone Ranger, possibly, and he was bareback and he rode around backwards, and uh, it was very cool. Um, and it was that that I'd seen, so I knew who he was. And um, I think it was in that video he jumped off and the horse span on its own. And there was a couple of other things I'd seen, and I was just like, "Oh my god, that is amazing! How do I, how do I do all of that stuff?" And that's kind of what led me down that path. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, <laughs> so so your first introduction to Liberty then was that once you got to dance? Yeah, yeah, yes. It, um, yeah, that was funny. That was it was uh, when I when I got to to dance place finally because it had been a bit of a wait, and I'd been <laughs> so sad. I'd been like following them on Instagram and Facebook and all the rest of it, and I remember getting there and just being so starstruck. <laughs> Like, you know, with all the horses like Swampy and and um, the blondes and everything, and I, yeah, I was quite starstruck by the horses, and yeah, so it was um, it was very cool. And then, yeah, what what watching all of the the Liberty team work together in the arena, I, I remember coming down because the farm's quite long, and I remember coming down the track and seeing them working the horses, and just being like, oh my god, it's so amazing. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I think I'm trying to remember. I think the first time. I ever worked any of the horses. I think it was um, the two the two blondes, and it was in the round pen. And uh, he'd been working them, and he just said, "Here you go, you can have a go now." And what with two? Mm, yeah, <laughs> and it was um, vanilla ice and spider pig. I was just trying to think. Oh my god, I can't remember their names. Um, yeah, and it was uh, yeah, it was in the round pen, and I remember just. Being like, oh, I'm okay. And <laughs> so I know Katie said on the first chat we did that um, the first clinic she did, she got to work his horses. And she said from that moment, she was completely hooked. I suppose it's like driving a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're so cool. Yeah, it was. And it's, yeah, it's just such a, it's such a cool, cool feeling. Especially when they've got it, you know, when they're, when they're trained and they've got it. And it, it's just like, like magic. It's, um. It's very cool, yeah, certainly. And then I just kind of, yeah, that was it really, hooked. Brilliant, so tell us one myth about Liberty then that you'd like to debunk. <laughs> um, one myth that I would like to debunk. Uh, I'm trying to think what my witty answer was now. So um, for me, uh, it's probably the, like this, the Liberty is, a, it's, a discipline in itself um you know aside from show jumping dressage whatever it's it's a whole other discipline and um I, so i guess the myth i would like to debunk is that it's just kind of you're in the arena and your horse is following you around um there's a lot more to it and there's a lot of training that, <laughs> a lot of training that goes into it um and a lot of work hard work um, to get to the point of some of the stuff that that we and the other trainers are doing. So, um, yeah, that's what I would like to do. <laughs> and I think, to be honest, though, I think really because people don't see so much of it yet um, and it's not so out there yet, um, 
yeah I think that's probably why so hopefully the more we can get it out there the more people will also get hooked and realize that yeah it's a whole other world <laughs> yeah. of um, horsemanship and yeah when I can half pass at Liberty I'll feel like I've won a gold medal and I know I'll uh, I'm winning <laughs> when I can do that <laughs> that's my goal <laughs> That's a, good, that's a good goal. Okay, so what's the most important thing that you've learned through your journey with horses and our liberty training? Um, I think to hang in there and not, not give up um, and that every horse can teach you so much if you give them the chance. Like every horse you meet, yeah I think especially with the horse training thing I, every every horse you meet is there for a reason and there to teach you something and yeah I think for me it's to keep an open mind and you know sometimes you walk into a situation with a horse and you think oh my god I can't deal with this or I don't want to deal with this <laughs> and um, often those are the situations that teach you the most if you can just like take a breath have an open mind and be able to kind of go with it Cool. Um, I was going to say something else and it's completely escaped me, oh. but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> it might come back to me. Um, so I suppose this is a bit similar then. What frustrates you in training and how do you deal with that? Um, so for me, I think probably my biggest problem is probably me uh, in that I put a lot of, I could put a lot of pressure on myself sometimes. Um, and also... I I'm really I'm a very patient person as in you know I, if someone or a horse or something is struggling or not getting something or I'm very patient I'm very level there but I'm not patient as in time wise I always like want things to be to be done now and then um, I put a lot of not pressure on the animals for that but pressure on myself and feel like I should oh I should be doing this by now or I should be able to do this so I think yeah that's probably yeah the most frustrating thing is is me <laughs> so that's one of the things I'm working on a lot at the minute. I think that's really interesting because when I've asked a similar question to um, the other people that I've spoken to they've all said oh you know just stop what you're doing and step away from the horse and I've been like well I'm never frustrated in the session I'm never frustrated with the horse like you've just yeah. said it's always you know, when you put the horse away and you're giving yourself a good whipping afterwards, yeah. something that you wished you'd done better or something like yeah. that. Um, I, yeah, I, I think in those situations as well, we have to remember how forgiving horses are too. Because, you know, if we can, you know, if we make these mistakes sometimes that we think are a massive big deal, the horse will come out the next day and usually it's like a, you know, another blank page again to start again yeah. with them and I think if we can just get in that headspace where you know it's it's a new day you know it's a we can start again rather than carrying everything from the previous day yeah and I think it's um it's the difference between an end goal and a process goal or a journey goal I think the pair of us can sometimes get mm. very focused on an end goal instead of appreciating like you say every horse teaches you something in that session and if you yeah. appreciate even if it didn't go to plan, what you've taken from that and what you've learned from it, actually that process is just as valuable as wh whether you are where you think you should be um, mm. as well. And just trying to, I think somebody else mentioned about trying not to compare yourself to other people as well. And it's just been a huge, a huge discipline to say, yeah. don't do it. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I have to say, like, that's one of the biggest things I've struggled with, especially now, like setting up, the business and stuff I have to be so careful because I am my own worst enemy and everyone does it like I have friends as well and we, we talk about it like you know you fall down this hole on Instagram or Facebook looking at someone else's stuff and then that leads you on to the next thing and and then it leaves you feeling like oh why aren't I at that level yet and oh they've got this horse and more and it's just it's pointless it just makes you feel awful it is and everybody's going at their own pace. And I think when you can accept that your challenges are your assets, yeah. then you, you're, you know, much further on. Yeah, so. definitely. It's definitely a big 
journey that, that we're all on isn't it and especially like this social media now it's just unhelpful sometimes <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i think it's definitely a work in progress with with me in particular with this stuff but so now that you've got your horses at home do you want to tell us a bit about your horses at home before we get on to this question yeah uh yeah so i have um snooks who is a beautiful he's very photogenic um black uh court horse and he's very sweet he's um six and uh yeah i've been working well when did i get them end of november so i spent the first bit of time just kind of getting to know them really um and with him i have i've ridden him a couple of times but really i wanted to just focus on um getting some liberty work done with him and um so we've we've kind of set a few good things in place now um i've been long reining him a little bit and then um, i'm gonna start riding him properly this month um but yeah, he's very, very sweet. Um, he's an he's an interesting one for me, particularly with this liberty stuff, because he likes his own space. Um, he just he's very polite and he's very sweet. Um, but he like uh, when you're working with him at Liberty, like he'll he'll stop where he is and he doesn't particularly want to come right to you. So I'm having to work on that with him to get him. To, to kind of like he needs to feel okay being that close to me it's not like it's weird it's not like he's you know he's, he's scared or anything or he just he's just like no, I'm, I'm okay here thanks <laughs> <laughs> no no just come a little bit closer please Aww. um so yeah that's an in, that's not something i've come across yet um but uh he's very he's incredibly trainable and he picks things up so quick um like it took me two days uh, last week to teach him um, to side pass to me. He did it in two sessions. Oh. He's so cool. Um, so yeah, and but that that's the other thing. Like with the with the frustration thing is, I've got so many things that I want to accomplish um, with both of them. But with him, like there's all the ridden stuff as well. So I'm having to really like break things down and take it all slowly because I just want it all there now. So. Yeah, I'm having to be quite disciplined with myself um, <laughs> with him. Uh, and then Merlin. <laughs> Merlin is a little um, black fluffy rescue pony. Uh, so he is, oh God, I can't remember, four, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah, so he's only a baby and uh, he's half, he's a Shetland cross. He was a rescue from a, um, he was rescued off a lorry um some gypsies had him and then left him on the meat wagon for four days before he was found and mm -hmm. so he had a pretty bad start but um he's uh yeah he's very cool he's uh, also very trainable and very um yeah clever picks up new things really quickly um but it's funny him and him and snooks are opposite in that he likes to be in your space and if he's not sure of something his default is to be right <laughs> up in your space so we're working on that at the minute um but yeah he he came and he was a little bit overweight so we're, we're, we're he's in a little weight loss program as well so i've been as well as doing the liberty the liberty stuff and the trick training i've been taking him out walking everywhere <laughs> and i cut tell you how many people have said to me now oh that's a big dog <laughs> <laughs> like yes yes it is <laughs> um so yeah so but he likes it i actually took him to a different part of the village today and he was walking around like oh looking at everything and no yeah he's very cool they're, they're both cool so um the plan with them i would really like particularly by may um is to have them both working as a team at liberty um and i think if they carry on the way they are i think hopefully we should we should have it um because they're both doing really well i did work them together for the first time both with halters and lead ropes on the other day that's quite funny they were <laughs> trying to get them both to go forward and they were both sort of going eh, eh, but there's another 
there's another horse here. Should we carry on? And they were both sort of <laughs> like, but yeah, that was it was quite funny. Um, but yeah, they're they're gonna be good. I'm I'm excited about them. Um, I just hope I can do them both justice. And um, yeah, it's been fun so far. So brilliant. So back to the second part of the question. So how how are you staying motivated? With them especially now that we're all back in lockdown again and it's icy and snowing <laughs> oh god yeah um yeah well i mean with merlin it's easy because i'm kind of trying to have him in this like strict weight loss thing so he has to get worked every day um so yeah that's that's easy with him um but then also yeah i think because i have this this clinic that we'll talk about a bit later in may and I, I want them to both be ready for their demo then. I have that in the back of my mind. So yeah, I want to be getting, especially with the Liberty stuff, I want to be getting them ready for that. So that's, yeah, that's my motivation there. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I just have a lot of goals. So really the motivation is fine. And I'm, with the weather being horrible and lockdown, it's just, I'm just trying to get on with it really. So do you have like a plan of action, like what you're going to do with them the next day? Do you have like a, what, how do you do it? What I've started doing, I've got this big, um, my diary for this year is one of those massive A4 ones and it's got a little section at the end that says notes on. So I've started writing like weekly goals for them um, in there. Uh, so yeah, I just do it weekly um and just say i don't know work like for instance both of them at the minute i'm working on the the lay down with them so <laughs> so every week i put continue working on lay down and then um yeah i don't know improve switches with snooks or whatever and yeah so i write them in and then try to do things to to get to there but then at the same time i'm not um i wrote i actually wrote about this in the blog um last week or whenever it was about having expectations and goal setting and stuff yeah yeah so yeah. i'm just trying to um you know with the goals keep them keep them realistic and kind of no pressure um but yeah set them so, prepared to let go of the outcome <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, so where are we? Um, oh, here's an interesting one. Are there any resources that have helped you along your journey of sort of learning type resources? Um, yeah, I refer to um, a lot of Warwick Schiller's videos if I need help with anything. Um, also, Ariana Sakara's. <laughs> I yeah, uh, I mean I'm in touch with her quite a bit actually. Um and she's she's just got an online program going there. So um yeah, I've been going on that and um and then I just keep in touch with like Sky and Josh who I worked with in Australia. I keep in touch with them. So if we've got any questions, I'll find them their way. And then also Nikki in Canada. Um so yeah, I just keep in touch with people and send videos and say um do you think this looks okay or <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think I've, i'm very lucky i've got a, a good network of people that can help if i get stuck or give me advice or i think um this is a question that i've asked a few people as well like because i I'm a geek. I like to read everything and watch loads of videos. But do you find that it gets confusing? Because obviously people do everything in slightly different ways. Mm. Um, and then how how do you how do you get over that? Um, I think and because I've because I've worked with so many of these different trainers now, I think what you have to do is just take what works best for you and your horse. Um, and just go with that and not worry too much about having to do everyone's set program because everyone yeah. develops their own program and it's it's a program they've developed through their own you know learnings yeah. in their in their journey and uh yeah like this year when i was um working in broadway i ended up kind of by the, by the time I got to the end of the summer, I realized that everything I was doing was like a mishmash of, of everyone I've worked with. And I just, 
but even then like I'd do one thing that I'd learned with one person with one horse and then a totally different thing with the other one yeah. I think that's that's what makes you a, a good or better horse person is being able to adapt like that mm. um yeah and recognize when something isn't working and you know be okay about trying something different Brilliant. So, finally, no question. What have you got planned for 2021, COVID oh, permitting? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Staying positive. Um, well, quite quite a bit, really. Um, for the first part of the year, I um, have some clinics booked from end of February onwards, depending on COVID. I'm not sure if the February ones are going to go ahead at this point because there's talk of lockdown till March, isn't there now? Yeah. Um, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see. <have> wine. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, so um, I've got a couple of confidence clinics booked, um, which I'm excited about. So um, two, two booked in Broadway, one at your place. Mm -hmm. Um and then what else have I got? Oh, lots of like different workshops as well that I'm also looking forward to. There's a long reigning workshop, um, the youngster workshop, which will be really cool. Um, and then we have the four day, the big one, day intensive <laughs> clinic, which is very exciting, a little scary, but very exciting. Um, yeah, so that's end of may isn't it i think from what i gather it's much more common like in america and australia to have these much longer clinics whereas mm. in the uk we only tend to do two days and i know myself having done like both days of the clinics that we've done before on the second day i'm so much further on than i was on the first day so i, I personally can't wait to do four yeah. days on the chart although my head might be fried by day four yeah i think i think mine will be too but I, <laughs> but it, no i i think you're right i think a lot of people and their horses will will get a lot further in the four days than they would in the little two day ones um and i'm i'm excited to see everyone's development in those four days because i think we're gonna finish up with a lot of cool liberty horses and it would be it would be really amazing you know if then they want to carry on with it and then you know we're promoting the the, the sport um yeah. by doing that and growing it so and we yeah, are excited culminating in a freestyle to music is it on the final day yeah i think um yeah so they can um put something together with their horse and some music and if you want to dress up costumes all welcome and yeah we'll, we'll film it and uh yeah and then you can go away with your video and <laughs> yeah i think it's it's gonna be fun and and yeah like i said so um snooks and merlin will be there doing a, a demo and um so we've yeah. got a quarter horse a shetland cross a welshie a shire horse i think some irish horses so any anybody welcome no That's experience. Gonna be great. There's going to be so, such a variety of horses. I'm excited to see um, how it goes with the with the shy horse because I've met him. He's a very cool horse, very cool, and uh, I'm not sure I've seen a shyer Liberty horse. So we could be starting a new trend. <laughs> it is. I can't wait. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that by May we should be safe on the old. Oh, curve. I hope so. I hope so. Um, yeah, and if not we'll do one in the year after 2022 <laughs> hope, yeah. i really hope we yeah we're able i think we'll be fine we can yeah hopefully crack well, on thank you very much for joining us where can people find found there uh, put my teeth back in find <laughs> out more about you if they're if they want to learn more um so the the website is uh um and the the idol is I D Y L L as well. Um and then also at Idle Wild Horsemanship on Instagram and then just Idle Wild Horsemanship on Facebook. So I've got all the I'm not on TikTok yet. No, I've got plenty of things to do. 
I think right. I, I think I sent you a message on Instagram about 12 months before we actually uh, got anything organized because you were still in Australia, yeah. weren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. So. It's very cool. cool. Well, thank yeah. you very much for joining us and That's hopefully I will see you soon on the other side. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So. We'll get there. We'll get there. Everyone's just got to think positive and yeah. stay at home. <laughs> um, Real. All right, then. We'll see you later. All right. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye.